Welcome to worship this morning, virtually at Castle Kerry Methodist Church. It's lovely to see so many of you here. I think we have set a new record uh, this morning. Um, it's uh, really great to see people from Castle Kerry, from our churches in our section, from around the circuit, and indeed we have uh, visitors here this morning from all over the country. So you are all very welcome to come and, and worship God with us today. And uh, it's my pleasure to introduce uh, Rob Haskins, um, broadcasting from uh, from his bubble with the doggles this morning, um, who will be leading us in our worship. So uh, I will mute Rob if you want to unmute yourself and uh, welcome this morning. Thank you and good morning to everyone. Uh, can I thank everybody who has made this morning service possible and can I also thank everybody for joining together with us in fellowship. We join in worship this morning with all the heavenly hosts and with all God's people living and departed. May the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace. and our prayer of approach. God, you hold us in faith, even when we offer you doubt. You meet us in hope, even when we journey in despair. You fill us with your love, even when we turn from your ways. Loving God, be for us, be with us, be in us. Today, and always. And we come to our first hymn, which is What Shall Our Greeting Be? What shall our greeting be? Signs of our unity, Jesus is Lord. May we no more defend barriers he died to end. Give me your hand, my friend, one church, one Lord. What is our mission here? makes his purpose clear. One world, one Lord, spirits of truth descend, all our confusions end. Give me your hand, my friend, Jesus is Lord. He comes to save us now. To serve him is to know life's true reward. May he our lives amend, all our betrayals end. Give me your hand, my friend, Jesus is Lord. And so we come to our prayers. And firstly, our prayer of adoration. We praise you, God, that you are greater than everything. The whole world marvels at the one who loves forever. All those close to you sing your praise. Their songs echo through time and space. Artists, musicians, speak with one voice, great, wise and beautiful God, lover of millions. Everywhere your brilliance startles and surprises us. Those who announce your good news praise you. Those who speak your words praise you. Those who have died for you praise you. Your friends, Across the world, praise you. 
all know about your love through the one who is your likeness and with the help of your spirit. And our prayer of confession, God of love through your only son, you have given us a new commandment that we should love one another as you loved us, the unworthy and the wandering. Give to us throughout our life on earth a mind ready to forget past ill will, a pure conscience and a heart ready to love others. And now we come to our reading from the gospel and I think Tom is going to share that reading with us. This is a reading from the Gospel of Mark. That evening after sunset, the people brought to Jesus all the sick and the demon possessed. The whole town gathered at the door and Jesus healed many who had various diseases. He also drove out many demons but he would not let the demons speak because they knew who he was. Very early in the morning, while it was still dark, Jesus got up, left the house and went off to a solitary place where he prayed. Thank you, Tom. One of my pet hates in the life of the church is fashionable buzzwords. And there was a time a few years ago when everything in the church seemed to revolve around discipleship. And we were told, for instance, that we should be building a discipleship or disciple-shaped church. And I am old enough to remember and to have seen many of these fashionable ideas come and go. But I found the discipleship one very difficult because I do happen to believe that our Christian discipleship is really important. The time between Epiphany and Lent is the season when traditionally we focus on discipleship. In many ways, it's a difficult theme to talk about because unless we're careful, it becomes a focus on ourselves rather than God. However, two points this morning that I would like to share with you and help you to think about. Number one, is being sufficiently strong within our own faith. So for instance, what are the things that we can do for ourselves to keep faith not only alive, but growing? What are the things that we need from other people to help sustain our faith? And secondly, how can we use our faith to help other people to faith. And I would say that that is not as difficult as we make it out to be because in so many cases, it's just helping people over the line. Now, like me, you may have smiled to yourself as you've listened to a preacher who knew all the answers and had a wonderful totally new take on the great mysteries of the faith. Well, you will know that um, I'm afraid cheap and easy in matters of faith is not only misguided, but downright dangerous because sometimes it leads people to think that faith is just a casual part-time commitment. Well, the covenant service disabuses us of any illusions like that and reminds us that following Jesus is actually a tough old proposition. 
And I cannot tell you this morning how much you should read your Bible, how long you should spend in prayer, how long you should spend time helping other people. What I can do is recommend to you the approach that Jesus took. So go back to your Gospels. Think of that reading that we had this morning and make a point of noting what Jesus' priorities were. And I think you'll agree with me that the keynote was giving time to God and giving time to other people. I suppose the greatest danger for individual Christians or for a faith community is for us to think that we've arrived. So that like the preacher who thinks he knows it all, we're actually kidding ourselves. Because faith, in order to grow, has to be constantly reinventing itself around those chain, unchanging certainties that we believe in, that we hold about God as revealed in Jesus. And if we don't do that regenerating of ourselves, then unfortunately we are wasting our time because we are trying to answer questions that people are no longer asking. So we are confronted, my friends, with that choice. Do we grow or do we sit back and just let the rot set in? In the world of nature, plants are incapable of growing without the help of heat and light and nutrition. And a good gardener will know exactly how to position and tend his or her plants for maximum growth. And I would say that our faith needs that similar support. And whilst it would be stupid to say that nobody can be a Christian on their own, for most of us, faith is just too difficult without the insights and the encouragement of like-minded people. Faith is a very individual thing, but we have so much that we can learn from other people. And if occasionally that leads to conflicting ideas, we just have to learn to live with that and walk with tactful Christian wisdom. So firstly, what are the things we can be doing to strengthen our own faith? I pause just for a short moment for us to reflect on that. And then secondly, what are the things that we can be doing to share our faith with other people? It disappoints me that so many Christians have this siege mentality and are convinced that the whole of the rest of the world is against them. Because despite the scandal of child abuse in recent church history and the uh, rather dubious way that clergy are portrayed in the TV programmes, my experience tells me that there are many, many people out, out there who have nothing but goodwill towards the church. And where there is hostility, it's almost always the result of ignorance rather than reasoned 
opposition. Now, why does that matter? Well, unfortunately, a siege mentality affects our attitude as believers. It does make us afraid to share our faith, perhaps for fear of negative response or personal vilification. We're not helped by what I call the crackpot evangelicals. I'm thinking mainly of America, who take every opportunity to try to bully people into faith. There are many people in our communities who have a profound faith, but do not like the way that we do religion. Some, of course, have not been inside a, a church for many years and just based their opinion on hearsay or supposition. There are people too out there who have a basic knowledge of Christianity from school days and are desperately looking for something profound in their lives. And all these people are spiritual men and women and children that we are meant to reach out to. And isn't it strange that in a perverse way, the pandemic has given us opportunities which could never have come about in any other way. Engaging with assisting people with essential groceries and medication, befriending people who are on their own. These have created for us a public profile and may lead somebody to ask the question about why such kind acts are being done. Remember, however, that not only Christians have responded in that way. As far as church worship is concerned at Castle Carey, we are fortunate to have people with the spiritual and technical gifts to present a regular high quality act of worship via Zoom. And we've been joined on Sunday mornings by people who are not perhaps normally church attenders. We've been joined by others from around the circuit and further afield. And to all these good folk this morning, we say, come and join us in our faith journey. And we say it with confidence, not because our hope is in ourselves, or in the institution of the church, but because our hope is in the one who has come into the world to show us what God is really like. So in these difficult days, may we work on strengthening our faith and being able to share our faith with others. Amen. Susie and Mark are going to guide us and lead us in our prayers of intercession. Our prayers are um, traditional and uh, when we say, Lord, in your mercy, please join in with hear our prayer. So let us pray. As the people in the reading read by Tom this morning brought uh, before Jesus are sick, we remember this morning all those who are unwell. And we particularly pray for Linda Wake. We pray for those who are unwell due to the coronavirus and pray you will grant them strength and healing. And in just a moment of quiet, we remember before you all those known to us who are ill. Thank you. 
Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We remember before you all those who are grieving. We particularly remember the family of Tricia Forbes. We remember her with fondness and give thanks for her life and for her service to this Methodist circuit. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those who feel isolated or alone, whether they are young or old, that they may experience your loving presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all in authority who face difficult decisions that affect the lives of many. Grant them wisdom and courage at this time. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for employers and employees who are fearful for the future, that businesses may be secured, jobs protected and families supported. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those facing financial hardship, that you would support and sustain them. We remember also all those who seek to show your love through the work of food banks and charities and through simple acts of kindness. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. We pray for all those involved in education, at what has been one of the most stressful of times. We pray particularly for our own teachers and young people, for Hannah and Anna, Kath and Tanya, and for Josh, Eliza, Esther, Archie, Daniel and Kezia. We pray too for those studying at university and at a high level at this strange time, especially for Matthew and Jessica and Danielle. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Finally, we lift before you all our frontline workers, those working in hospitals, care homes and GP surgeries those who work in essential shops and supermarkets, and all those making deliveries. We pray for those who ensure we have water and power and useful things like broadband, and for those who do the myriad of jobs behind the scenes which we don't even know about. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of life, in this time of crises for families and communities, our nation and our world, we turn to you in faith, knowing that nothing can separate us from your love, made known to us in your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And we ask these prayers in his name. Amen. Amen. And we pray also for those of our own community of faith who have died. And we remember in particular Amy Trott and David Tupper. The souls of the righteous are in the hand of God and no torment shall ever touch them. In the sight of the unwise they seemed to have died, but they are at peace. And we finish our prayers with the prayer of Terry Waite, who you will remember was held captive for many years in the Middle East. O oh Lord, in a world where many are lonely, we thank you for our friendships. In a world where many are captive, we thank you for our freedom. In a world where many are hungry, we thank you for your provision. We pray that you will enlarge our sympathy, deepen our compassion, and give us grateful hearts in Christ's name. And we sum up all our prayers in the words of the Lord's Prayer, and I think this morning we have a modern version that we can use together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, 
your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. And so we come to our final hymn, which is Community of Christ. The words may not be familiar, but I'm sure you will know the tune. final prayer. May we learn from the past but not be bound by it. May we enjoy the present and not waste it. May we look forward to the future but not try to live in it. And in all things and at all times, may we discover the ever-present reality of God. And we bless each other with the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. Rob, thank you very, very much indeed for leading our worship this morning. Um, some really uh, some things to go away and, and think about um, following that so so thank you very much for that um, I've had a few messages through the service to, to say that some of you were having trouble hearing the audio of the hymns this morning I apologize for that if um, if that was you um, I'll make sure that the hymns are dropped into the uh, to the recording so it'll the the full music will be available on the uh, on the website um, so apologies if you if you couldn't hear it this morning um, Hannah do you want to tell us about what's happening uh, next week uh, yes, I was going to first of all just remind people that if um, 
Uh, it's Fiona Smith's accreditation service as a uh, local preacher this afternoon, I believe at five o'clock. Um, uh, the uh, Zoom link was on the notices, I believe, but if anybody needs that or wants that separately, uh, do email either uh, the Castle Kerry Methodist web, uh, email address or Dave and uh, we'll get that to you for this afternoon. I believe he's running that. Um, then next week, uh, I believe it's a united service on Zoom uh, with uh, David Osborne uh, leading us um, and uh, hopefully um, it's lovely to see some uh, of our other uh, churchgoers from the Castle Coe community uh, with us already this morning, but uh, we may have some more Anglicans with us next week, I believe. Um, so uh, that's what's happening next week. Uh, I think that's all. Uh, home groups carry on on Zoom. Let us know if you want to join one. Feel free to stay and chat, grab a coffee, or uh, if you've got other things to get on with, that's absolutely <laughs> fine. It's so lovely to see so many of you. Um, and uh, uh, we wish you all a very good week. Thank you very much.